All right, we have already submitted assignment six. In the last video, we finished it up. So I'm going to go to assignment, scroll down to there. But I wanted to point out again all of these resources, and especially these slides I've created called an exhaustive explanation of CMYK color separation. Because this can be used as a way of making it print ready for professional printing, not just for, for our fine art printers, but for what's called four color offset lithography printing. Like if you're actually going to print a poster professionally. The reason they're printed not on fine art printers, but on offset lithography printing presses is that the per print price is very, very cheap because printing ink for a lithography press is very cheap. All you're paying for really is the paper and the print time. But in order for that to be worthwhile, you need to print at least a thousand of the things. <laughs> so that's true for like posters, promotional campaigns, things like that. If we go to the assignment, assignment six, this is what I submitted as my finished arrangement of type, background, and spot illustration. And you are free to modify that and improve this poster any way you like to make your best portfolio piece. And so I'm going to show you some finishing techniques I can add on top of that. So first, I go to my PSD poster. I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. And remember, we worked on some of this in, in Vector.com. If we're using freeware for Illustrator, I used Illustrator for some of it. You can use Photo P for it and then bring it all into Photoshop. But what's nice about this is it has it all separated into these different layers, right? Now, more finishing techniques can be added on top. But what I'm mimicking here with this background are what are called halftone dots. And I just did that from different Pixabay backgrounds that were based on halftone dots. But what are halftone dots really? Because if I zoom in here, so you see the actual pixels, you can see that there are solid pixels of lots and lots of different colors making up those rough dot patterns. What halftone dots really are, we can use these slides to understand. And what it does is a standard printer uses three color inks and black ink on white paper to give you the, the impression, it's an illusion, of thousands of colors. No longer millions of colors like the light can produce in the computer screen for us to see, but thousands of colors. This is the difference between RGB, which is what we are looking at when we're creating digital art. RGB stands for red light, green light, blue light. These are the frequencies of the colors of red, green, and blue that are used. When those lights are overlapped, you can think of them as a red light bulb, a green light bulb, and a blue light bulb. When they overlap, all three of them, they create white light. And the reason we get the rainbow is when you overlap just two of them, like red and green light, you get yellow light. When you overlap red and blue, you get what's called magenta light, which actually looks a little bit brighter than it does here. And when you overlap green and blue, you get cyan light. Now, why? Because light is additive. The more light you add, the brighter it is, until eventually you get to bright white. So all of what are called the secondary colors of the light primaries are lighter than the primary colors. What's interesting, though, is if you take the secondary colors of the light primaries, you get the primary colors of what's called the pigment primaries. Or you can think of them as the printer ink primaries. So those are cyan, magenta, and yellow. Cyan, magenta, and yellow. So printing is subtractive. It means the more ink you add, the darker it gets. It's the opposite of light. So if you add all of them together, you would hope to get black. But because printing ink isn't perfect, like light is on our optics, you don't get black. Instead, you get kind of this muddy brown. So we, ha we have to add an additional ink which is not a color because black and white are not colors in their purest forms, but you add black to cyan, magenta, and yellow in order to, to give you the best impression on white paper of all the colors. Does that kind of make sense? 
because on your exam we'll talk about the differences between RGB versus CMYK. And part of the process is changing your, your image from RGB mode to CMYK mode so you can see how it would break down in the printing channels. These are what those dots look like when they're printed and overlapping each other because ink is also not 100% opaque. It's more like 75 to 80% opaque, which means that when you put cyan ink over magenta ink, you have a little bit of an overlap there of a new color. You have artists that will color separate into these channels for their own purposes. This is a digital artist who prints onto cardboard in these different color channels, then scans all of that cardboard printing back into the computer and then overlays them in order to get these, these channeled animations. So this is kind of how it looks. This is the finished image, but it's made of these different cyan, magenta, and yellow layers, right? And when you overlap them, you get this in the computer. This is color separation. And then he does it enough times to make frames for an animation. It's this very involved process. Now, you might wonder, because this doesn't have any gradients, right? These are just solid kind of flat colors that are created with cyan, magenta, and yellow. But what if you want gradients? What if you want different values of color? Well, that's when you have to start separating into dots. And that's what we call bin day dots or half tone screening. It's after this guy, Benjamin Day. And it's an approach to professional printing that's inspired by the post-impressionist technique of pointillism, of separating gradations into discrete dots. But this is mechanizing it. You can do it in black and white and you get something like this. This is just done with black ink, but if you separate the black ink into discrete dots, you can get what looks like grayscale for a black and white photograph, like how newspapers are printed. Then if you separate it into four different channels, four different inks, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and overlap them all with precise screen angles, you can get the illusion of thousands of colors in full color printing, which wasn't popularized or made even affordable in our culture until around the 1950s. You saw it a little bit in the 1930s, but super expensive. So you didn't get color advertising and print jobs really until the 1950s. And it was because of this process. So how do we see it today in digital art? Well, we see it as an effect that's added on. Because the reason you could see the dots in early printing was because the paper quality was so bad, the dots had to be quite big. Otherwise, it would just destroy the paper if you did the, the high resolution of printing we do now. So this is where DPI matters, dots per inch in printing. But we print with like 1,200 dots per inch. So you're never going to see the dots. But if you want that kind of retro appeal, then you can make those dots purposely visible. As you can see here, mixed with flat color, they're just using the skin tone as a halftone dot version for the skin tone. Or you can see it overlaid onto other images to reference older printing, like we saw in like the Spider-Verse movies. Now, what I find really interesting about halftone dot theory and the screen angles, which you're required to learn for one of your learning outcomes, is that even black and white, or what we would call grayscale images, are best when printed in full color. So this gray rock is actually printed with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So it doesn't look just dead on the page. So the only reason to print without full color is if you're trying to save money and you can only have one ink. And then full color images also use these same angles and these same colors. And all that varies is how thick the dots are. So if it's not very colorful, the dots are really thin, the black is heavier, and they turn into Gaussian roses that are mostly desaturated. You know? But when the color is brighter, the, the color dots are bigger, the black dots might be smaller, and they're overlaid and then you see a lot of color coming through in the overlaps. So it has everything to do with these angles and how they overlap each other. These are what are called Gaussian roses. So they make these little concentric circles that kind of radiate out. And from a distance, it helps our, our eye to see all those mixtures. So this is how you can see it in kind of old comics. 
And this is how you can see it applied to some of our spot illustration coloring, right? So basically, how do we do that? That's the end of those slides. We can cheat it or we can do it for real. So first, I'm going to show you how we can cheat it. I'm going to make a duplicate of my spot illustration onto a new layer. I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to use a cheat filter. And filters are mostly cheats. The only one that's not a cheat that we use is the Gaussian blur to take focus away. But if I go to the filter gallery and I go to the sketch effects, there's one for halftone pattern. Let me get to where I'm previewing it. I'm going to shrink it on to screen here. Now, halftone pattern. Halftones only work on one color, right? Because it's about tones. So it's going to simplify your color image into just two tones. And then you can set the size of your halftone and the contrast of it. And the pattern type, because it doesn't need to be a dot. That's just kind of the, the default. You can do it in some other interesting ways, like concentric circles or in hatched lines but I like the dots. It gives you kind of the most clarity. I can increase the contrast and I can increase the size of the dot. So it's really, really visible, right? So this is to cheat it. So then I say, okay, and I get that as a layer and it still has a stroke on it. Now what I'm going to do is play with a blending mode. like vivid light to show that overlapped on the image. Right? Then what I can do, if I just want to use it really subtly, is I can just take the opacity down on it and use it as kind of a texture overlay. But that's a texture fill on just one aspect of it. So it gets it in there, it cheats it. How do we do it for real? Well, for real, I'm going to Take my vector full color image. It's still a smart object. I'm going to select all of it. Command A, Command C. I'm going to save. So now it's on the clipboard, right? I'm going to save this Photoshop file and close it, then open a new file. And because I have it on the clipboard, it's going to already create something that matches the size and the resolution of my spot illustration. And the whole reason I did that is to get this discrete image that I want to turn into halftone printing. Now what I'm going to do is go to, because I don't think I have it loaded in here. Oh, I did load it. Okay, I'm going to show you how to be able to load this for yourself. But I've created an action. This is kind of programming within Photoshop. It does it for you. It's many steps. These are all the steps. But this action, I'm going to play how to separate this image just into cyan, halftones. There we go. And my actions are all written, so it creates a separate file for it. Now I'm going to do the same thing with magenta. Or no, I'm sorry, with yellow next. Play. Go flat. Okay, now I see yellow. And on and on. Magenta. Play. Don't flatten. <laughs> and black. Play. Don't flatten. Okay, so now I have four different files. One that's cyan, one that's yellow, one that's magenta, and one that's black. Notice the black is a ring here. The magenta is solid. The yellow is a ring with just a tiny bit of yellow dots inside. And the cyan is solid. That's because this color, this kind of purplish color, has a little bit of yellow in it, has a lot of magenta, has a lot of cyan, doesn't have any black. So what does it look like when they're all layered on top of each other? Well, I've created an action for you to use, and I'll try to explain it, which does all of them and then combines them all. So it's called CMYK Full Run. And I'll show you how you can get these actions. You can load them into your own version of Photoshop. 
and don't flatten.